Hello everyone and welcome back to the Milu project. Today, we're going to be making a better IPA chart. Before we begin, don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoy this video. And join us next week for our episode on creating a new system for valves. Anyway, let's begin. In the 19th century, linguists were fed up with trying to use often ambiguous letters to transcribe foreign languages. To combat this, they invented the IPA, or International Phonetic Alphabet. This contains almost all the sounds which humans can make. These linguists then organised these into the now commonly used IPA chart. This chart contains two main pieces of information, the places each sound or phoneme is articulated and the manner in which this is done so in. Now this chart has many advantages, such as the fact that it shows how and where each sound is articulated. It distinguishes between similar sounds and the fact that it includes the sounds of almost all known languages is quite impressive as well. However, although extremely useful, the IPA chart is not without its flaws. For example, the IPA chart doesn't actually show all the sounds found in human languages. For one, it doesn't show vowels, and secondly, it doesn't show things like affricates, implosives, and clicks. It also lacks any information on the frequency of the sounds, as well as any information on how to pick them. And my final complaint is that it's quite visually unappealing. I mean, who wants to be looking at a black and white grid for the hours it takes developing a language's phonology? So today, I'm going to be rectifying most of these issues, giving the centuries-old chart a facelift. So let's get building this chart. Now, our new chart will include both the places and manners of articulation, as well as the frequency of the phonemes. I think that including the frequency will be very helpful, because, for beginners, it's very hard to know which sounds to pick, and having those popular sounds to fall back on should be quite helpful. Let's make a spectrum for the places of articulation, stretching from bilabial sounds all the way to the glottals. And we're going to distinguish between these with colours. The warmer colours will signify articulation towards the front of the mouth, and the cooler ones will represent articulation at the back of the mouth. Here, you can see how the system would work. And I think I'll stick with the manners of articulation along the x-axis, as demonstrated here. And once we've filled in a few more cells, this is what we're left with. But we're not done yet. For this table to surpass its predecessor, it also needs to include the frequencies of sounds. Let's arrange the frequency along the y-axis. I think this will be particularly useful because by only looking at the first few lines of our new chart, you'd be able to construct an accurate phonology and you'd only need to pick some sounds from the bottom to make your conlang more unique. Anyway, for the frequencies, I used an extremely useful website called Foible. Link in the description. And I was able to deduce that these sounds, P, T, K, M, and N, are the most popular consonants, occurring in these proportions. Now after arranging all the sounds according to frequency and manners of articulation, this 
is our new charts. Along the y-axis, the sounds are ordered according to their frequencies in human languages. And on the x, their manners of articulation. One quite bizarre thing though that I've chosen to do is stagger some of these different places of articulation. For example, the trills, taps and ejectives all sit three cells lower than the other sounds. This is because these sounds occur in less than 50% of the world's languages, and the sounds which are found in less than 10% of the world's languages are lowered by a further two cells. This encourages you, the conlanger, to pick more common sounds. Oh, and by the way, here's the table flipped on its side, because I know some of the plosives and fricatives got cut off. Now, our new chart has many advantages, such as helping beginners to learn the IPA quicker, encouraging popular sounds, having room for expansion, containing almost all human sounds, and being less boring. However, it does have a few disadvantages, such as not being very useful to colorblind people, and the fact that the colors can be quite overwhelming. Although, next week, we're going to be fixing the absence of vowels in our episode on designing a new system for vowels and diphthongs. Anyway, that's all for this week. You can find a free copy of our IPA chart in the description. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and join us next week for our episode on vowels. Bye.